listening to the DFS On Deck Podcast, brought to you by LineStar, the top-rated DFS tool set and number one companion for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo Daily Fantasy. Go LineStar Premium now at LineStarApp.com. Now, here are your hosts, fantasy baseball experts, Joe Pizzapia and Chris Meany. Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizzapia, and welcome to On Deck right here on the Line Star app. It's me, and it's Chris Meany, and it's you. It's Tuesday. We're talking a little MLB DFS. That's where we are, and that's where you are. We're hanging out. It's a fun Tuesday morning here. I uh, spent the day at the beach yesterday. But, uh, you know, Dakota Hudson was out there working. In fact, he was working so hard, six and two thirds, no hit innings. But unfortunately, even though we talked about him, even though we picked our spot yet again with Dakota Hudson and we were right, Chris Meany, we were denied a little history. Why? Because he got to like 110 pitches and he might explode. Uh, it's a little frustrating for me, Chris. I don't know. Am I just a cranky old fart? <laughs> You're not a cranky old fart. Um, you know, well, obviously, I am. You could you'd be, those two you'd be a I little bit happier if they push Dakota Hudson just a little bit more. Because, yeah, I was watching that. I mean, a no-hitter through six, and he was into the sixth inning, and then he walked a guy, and that was basically it. Yeah, you're right, 111 pitches, and, and it was shutdown mode. We have picked our spots with him. He's lowered his ERA at home to 3.24. I mean, for a guy who doesn't really strike out a lot, six six 6.9 per, walking 4 point two per but he keeps that ball on the ground which is what we love but yeah times have changed joe and i was looking at it before we came on so uh, last season there were 13 pitchers to complete 200 innings i just went back to 2005 do you know how many pitchers had at least 200 innings in 2005 uh yeah it's at least twice as many because i think this is a there's a stat in the black book where i did this same exact thing it's from like 50 yeah, 50. Yeah, it's like <laughs> 50. I mean, obviously, we have guys like Randy Johnson who did a year in, year out, you know, 225. Chris Carpenter, 241. Levon Hernandez led the led the league with 246. Oh, wow. Levon Hernandez. Yeah, Hernandez, right? I mean, those guys, but the big three that we talked about before we actually came on, you know, Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin, John Smoltz, those guys, year in and year out, 200 plus deep into the postseason. But yeah, times have changed. They get to a certain number and and that's it. I mean, I just don't understand why everyone doesn't copy. You. And don't, we were talking about this before the show, why everybody doesn't copy the old Atlanta Braves model where Glavin and Smoltz and Maddox went out there and they trained for a marathon because that's what the season is. They threw 200 something innings every year. Then they threw playoff innings every single year. And the guys never broke down. Smoltz eventually did, but that was like when he was like in his late thirties. Yeah. So it's just it's still dominant. Yeah. But I don't understand. Like there's the model. Like, there it is. And even Avery was in that group. Like, he was there for a while. It just, I don't know, man. I don't understand. I don't get it. It's its right there in front of you. And yet they continue to treat these guys like they're running sprints. And that's all they could do. And I feel kind of bad for him in a way because that could have been, like, the moment of his career. Like, Dakota Hudson might not win his side. Right. Dakota Hudson might never, I don't know, play in a, in a World Series. But, you know, what? he might have that one shining moment in August. In back in 2019, where he could have thrown a no hitter, but alas, it's not meant to be. Ugh, whatever, I'm old and cranky. I think that's just what it comes down to. Let's fly around the rest of yesterday. So we were right about Dakota Hudson. That was a positive. We were right, of course, about Wade Miley, but that didn't take a lot of rocket science. I was mad that Jose Altuve was not in the lineup yesterday. Pissed me off, uh, and I'm I'm pissed off. I bad showing. Look, five runs. That's it against Edwin Jackson. Are you kidding me, Houston? And- you, and they all on. came in the first, basically. They had four yeah, in the no. first, and it was like, oh, here we go. Like, just through the whole crew, right? Alvarez was in on it. Girl, I was in on it twice. I mean, they were scoring some runs. Uh, yeah, I mean, disappointing. Disappointing showing from them. Disappointing showing from the Twins. I'll, I'll take the heat on the Gibson call. Somebody even asked me, like, a sidebar, would you you know, would you know, start Gibson if you're worried about ratios? I'm like, yeah, I'm rolling out there. I mean, it's the White Sox. He had two legit starts against them, and, and you know, he was lit up as well. Well, it was the one bad inning, too. Fiber. He gave up four it, in the third. Yeah. He had that one bad inning. That didn't yeah. help. Errors didn't help either. So, Polanco no. did go yard in that one. His 18th, Jose Abreu, was 27th. Charlie Blackman went yard later last night, too. Uh, 27th for him so another decent season but I think Charlie Blackman's time is coming to an end most likely out there I think they're gonna they need to do something uh, that That's Daniel Murphy contract him. yeah that Daniel Murphy contract was weird and like, yep. I never understood why they made that like, they had a, a dearth of infield talent coming through the system it's like hey no. let's sign an old fart infielder 
This is what they do. This is what Colorado does. And so you know what? Weird. Maybe their prospects are not that good, actually. Like, because Ro- I, I, how would I'll they know? The they never get the play. It's true. I will give them the benefit of the doubt for like Rogers, but like Garrett Hampson came up and he was striking out like over thirty five percent of the time. But yeah, you're right. This is what they, they did it a couple years ago with with Desmond when they could have just you know turned the page and and give David Dahl the opportunity. And then you're right. They bring in Daniel Murphy. It, it almost feels like they think that there's a legit chance to, to hang around, but this has been the writing on the wall for them. I think we'll see a lot of changes from Colorado in the off season, but Zach yeah, Gallon again was pretty solid in that outing. He did walk six, but he only allowed one run and struck out eight. So he's been, he's off to a pretty good start for his career. He's had some moments. That's for sure. And, and this one just snuck up on me out of nowhere. Freddie Galvis hit his 20th home run last night. And I said to Chris, I said, is that typo? <laughs> Pretty and confident. I was like, yeah, typo for like, sure. Yeah, it's got to be a typo. <laughs> like, it's amazing. You could do a baseball show every day. <laughs> and yet still, there's certain stats and certain things that sneak up on you. And, yeah. and you know, it's funny because I always talk about Freddie Galvis whenever I do a write-up in the Black Book on. I'm like, you know, Freddie Galvis can put the ball in play. Freddie Galvis has a little bit of pop. Freddie Galvis, yeah. I don't know why this Picks guy can't. He's well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, the Nats blank the Pirates 13 to nothing there. Uh, Adam Eaton, who we talked about, continues to stay hot. Right. As as Drupal Cabrera, another a nice pickup. We've been highlighting him as one of these guys. I think last night he was like two nine or something like that on FanDuel. Yes, uh, Jonathan yeah. Villar, who you talked about yesterday on the show, another home run from him, sixteen for VR. So uh, overall, I was it was a good strong night. I would say a, a B plus night. We didn't quite get the offense out of Houston. I think that we wanted it. We made an investment there. But other than that, as a B plus night, uh, yeah. it would have been you an know, A plus if Dakota Hudson threw a no hitter. It would have been an A plus plus. Honestly, nobody was on yeah. Dakota Hudson. His ownership was extremely low. You know, when we got some runs in Texas and LA, what we wanted. I mentioned Albert Pujols. He's he's been heating right. up. He's been catching him with some RBIs, hits lefties well. And then on the Texas side, we got some runs there. So I, you know, they play twice today the, on Fanduel. You can get in on both of them. It's weird. You know, they got weird slates over there. And we're going to get into the action today, but I would expect a lot of runs in, in both those games as well. Again, well, it is Tuesday. It's a new day. Yes, it is. So let's get after it. And the first one we got is Steven Strasburg on the mound against Chris Archer and the uh, Pirates yet again. Pretty much everything that we said yesterday, you can just Supplies. pick it up and drop it over. And Steven Strasburg at 10 4 on DK is a great value. Like I would expect him to be more on DK personally. He's yeah. only uh, 10 over on. FanDuel side so I think you can roll with him there too uh, Archer stinks this goes back to again Soto at four Adam Eaton still at three eight Astrubal Cabrera at two eight he's still super cheap uh Matt Adams at three two another dinger for him yesterday Victor Robles there's a lot of cheap pieces in this Nats lineup where you could take Strasburg in the Nats and basically like that's your cash game and that's perfectly fine to do today yet again against Archer yeah, absolutely. And if you've checked what they've done lately, I mean, 13 runs yesterday, 16 on Sunday, 14 on Saturday. They had 17 on Thursday. Like, this is a team that is scoring runs. They're heading into this part of the year extremely hot. Adam Eaton has four homers in his last three games. His average is up to 289 all of a sudden. And, yeah, the Nationals are a complete value over on Fando. Like, they are – like, again, if you are a DraftKings player – you need to just move over to FanDuel. You could easily get a stack like this with Washington right. and still roll out a top-tier pitcher tonight. Yeah, 100%. All right, let's move on to the next one in Baltimore. Dylan Bundy at home against Brad Keller. I'm just going to, again, it's, I feel like I'm just living in a, in a loop. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Whit Merrifield, 3.2. Why? Why? That's no, just bananas, no, no. man. That's It's totally crazy. He should not be 3.2. He's 5K on DK, all right? So you're talking the guy in the upper echelon of pricing and on the other side, he's basically in the lower end of pricing. It's unbelievable. Take advantage of it and take advantage of, of this opportunity in that ballpark as well. And Hunter Dozier's at three, nine, another decent value. Jorge Soler at three, six. Uh, I'll still stick with the one off of VR at three, seven and Santander three, one. The rest of this lineup just doesn't move me. Uh, Does Brad Keller move you at all? Just throwing it out there. Um, not, not really. He, I picked some spots with him too. If this was in so Kansas City against Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. I think we both have another guy like Dakota Hudson really keeps the ball on the ground. 50% of the time doesn't strike out a lot of guys. And sometimes the walks, you know, get him in trouble, but I would like him a little bit more in Kansas city. Baltimore doesn't do anything for me either. Like I wouldn't be shocked if he went six and two thirds, give up two runs. I'll tell you what, he does it for five. me. He yeah. does it for me tonight at eight. He really does eight over on FanDuel. 
I think you look at the game log, he's going six or seven innings in the last five starts. He's just seven five on DK. So as a lineup builder on DK, as a secondary arm, I love him tonight. So yeah, Brad I, I Keller think for me very much play. dead on with the righties. For Bundy, I mean, allowing 42% fly ball right to righties, and most of the home runs he's allowed 16 have been to right-handed bats. So, like, yeah, Merrifield, Dozier, Solaire, Solaire Merrifield Solaire. is a nice grouping tonight. And I, and I do, I just look, how do you want to afford guys on, on DK? Well, you need a guy like Brad Keller at 7 5. Like, For that's sure. what you need. And then you got a guy like Cal Quantrill in the next game who's at 7 3. I prefer Keller. I think Keller's got an easier out here against Bundy. Then Sunday, and I know the ballpark factor is, is something to consider, but still, it's a better situation than Cal Quantrill, I think, at the same spot, who guy has talent, but still, I think, a little limited in terms of how many pitches he's going to be allowed to throw. And Sonny Gray is a guy that we've liked all year. So what do you think of Sonny Gray tonight at 9-7 on DK and 10-4 on FanDuel? Both of those prices, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I'm interested in Sonny Gray. I like his DraftKings price at 9-7. The Padres are not the same team without Fernando Tatis Jr. leading off. And yeah, we have been all over Sonny Gray. And the game log has been great. In fact, he hasn't allowed a run in his last three outings. And he's only allowed seven hits over that span. And he's coming away with 24 strikeouts. It's against the That's against the Braves, the Cubs, and the Cardinals. So this is going to be the easiest matchup he's had this month. So I'm certainly in on Sunny Gray, and that's why we're seeing a team implied total with San Diego at 3.8. All right, so I had to do this because, you know, because I talked about at the beginning of the show. So Freddie Galvis in the month of August so far, four, <laughs> four home runs, seven RBI, uh, pretty good 22 hits. That's yeah. not bad. We're 20 not bad. Days in, just picked up for hits. free from the Reds. I mean, the Jays, yeah. again, I mean, just <laughs> disappointing if you're a Jays fan. They just gave this guy, I'm sure they could have traded him for something, a 20-home yeah, run guy. <laughs> Guy who is you know, Cabrera, another one that just got at, like yeah, medicine. just what? yeah, just like oh, but he at least like Galvis was having a decent season. He had cleaned up the other day for for Cincinnati. He was hitting in the five spot. You know what? Not a bad... This is the dude. This is the new thing because of what's going on with um the new you know one isolated trade deadline. Yeah. Teams are going to be like, yeah, you know what? I don't want to give up a prospect for that guy. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then teams are going to say, all right, screw. It. We're just going to release guys. And you're going to have a whole lot of these. This is going to be a trend. You watch next year is yeah. going to be even more of this. Uh, but yeah, Freddie Galvis at 2.8. Aquino is at a four. Suarez 2. at three. 8. Eight. Wow. Yeah. So at 2.8, I mean, why not roll with Freddie Galvis again? I mean, it's hard no, to say no. No kidding. Yeah, I would do that for sure. It's like nice pun play. All right. Aaron Nola on the road in Boston against the Red Sox. 9.7. So you are getting a bit of a discount there over on FanDuel. On DK, he's at 10. So do you feel confident that Nola can go into Boston and be the very good Aaron Nola as opposed to the disappointing Aaron Nola? I mean, I'm sure he could. There's just a lot of risk there. I mean, the Red Sox team that doesn't strike out a ton. And even as good as Aaron Nola has been in the second half, especially, I mean, Boston still has a 5.6 team applied total. So I, I'm not... I'm not, I'm not going to go there. I, I would rather just, you know, I'll save myself the $300 on DraftKings and play Sonny Gray. Um, and there's some couple other aces on the hill that I like. I mean, even Steven Strasburg at 10-4, a much, much better matchup against the Pirates than rolling out Nola at 10 against the Red Sox at Fenway. So I won't go there, but I, I can't blame anybody who wants to. It's the ultimate contrarian GPP play because I can't imagine his ownership is going to be high against, you know, the Red Sox. Speaking of the Red Sox, yesterday the news came out about Chris Sale not needing Tommy John, but certainly this is going to affect his his value. I mean, it's hard to look at this and I think that it's not uh, going forward in next year's drafts and just people being confident in Chris Sale again. And he hasn't been right all year. I think we could all agree. I mean, from the beginning of the year, it's just weird. Like, it's just, something's wrong. He signed a big contract and wouldn't you know it. As soon as he signs a big contract, something awful happens. I'm pretty surprised, actually, the Red Sox. I said this the day it happened that I was I was pretty surprised the Red Sox went all in. I was like, oh, they must not have any concerns with him. But they babied him last year into the into the postseason, down the stretch and into the postseason, and still hadn't gone more than like five innings in the postseason. And then we've seen what we saw this year. It's been it's been rough. So yeah, yeah. I don't know about Chris Sale. Definitely not going to be the guy we're we're used to seeing anymore. Nope. All right. Well, Seattle Mariners have been hot lately and uh, they're taking on the Rays. And look, this was a game I got to tell you yesterday. I didn't want any part of turned out to be one of the better offensive games on the slate there, especially from the Mariners side. But you've got home runs from Tommy Pham uh, in that game. So uh, what's your approach tonight with this one? Because it's another who's who of who the hell in terms of pitchers. And you still got guys like Austin Nola, who's just two point six on FanDuel, who continues to be decent. 
He had another home run yesterday too. So there's some spots here. Uh, is this another game where you're just lineup building or is this a game we need to start paying a little bit more attention to both of these offenses just overall? Yeah, I think maybe a little bit more attention. This is a full slate today, so I would I would imagine most people will kind of skim over this game, especially from the Seattle standpoint, even with them scoring a bunch of runs yesterday. I mean, we talked about Seager. Now he gets a righty, even though it's going to be Castillo for like an inning. But, I mean, he's still not a bad price on FanDuel. Tim Lopes at 2-2 on DraftKings. It's not every day you get a leadoff hitter at 2-2 on DraftKings. And I know yesterday he only had the one hit, but uh, he's been actually pretty decent lately. I mean, in fact, he's got a hit in eight of his last nine games. So, I mean, that's not bad at 2-2. But, you know, ultimately, I'm not going to really go there. I think I'm just, I'll just, like, pluck guys like maybe Crawford at 3-5 here and there, Seager on FanDuel, Austin Nola on FanDuel. But, you know, that's that's basically it. On Tampa side, I still like Jesus Aguilar as a little just valued tournament shot at, at 3-3 three, three on right. draft. Things. It's Hopefully not Dinger. Yeah. yeah. All right. The Mets at home. Usually, Steven Matz is a guy that we kind of like at home. He's been pretty yeah. good, but uh, against Shane Bieber, I don't know. I can't I can't get there. Sorry. <laughs> like, I, you know, it's I just tough. think a lot of Shane Bieber. And, and look, you got speaking of uh, thinking a lot of him, I'm not the only one. The algorithm loves him tonight, too. 11-6 for him. Uh, over on DK 11 on FanDuel. So I guess the question is, do you like Strasburg at the discount? Because you're getting a, a, a significant $1,000 discount there uh, from Strasburg and Bieber. Or yeah. should I say Bieber down to Strasburg? I, I still take the Strasburg discount. Uh, how about you? Yeah, I take it as well, but I have no problem spending up for Bieber if you could make it work. A 2.77 ERA on the road. Opponents only hitting 181, and we know... Uh, it's a very friendly environment in New York for pitchers. I mean, this is why Steve Matz has the splits that he does. So definitely like Bieber. It's not the same lineup without Jeff McNeil. The same sort sort of thing applies when talking about Tatis and the Padres. But save yourself a little bit of cash to Strasburg. But again, Bieber, I would expect Bieber to have a pretty solid game. He hasn't had a bad one in a long, long time. And His I last know two Bizarro's outings to been... Boston and Minnesota, 18 strikeouts, only yeah. four runs. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, uh, look, and, and Rosario, I know, has been OK, actually, and he moved up to that top of that order with McNeil out. But even at 2.9, I think he's a he's a big trap tonight because he does not hit good pitching. He has never hit really, you know, consistently good pitching. He takes advantage of some guys that are kind of meh. I know I've watched enough of him in my life. I'm just telling you, he's a guy like Bieber tonight. It's a trap. Uh, so going to fade away from that. And I think when you have guys like Brad Keller, this is how you get up to Shane Bieber. You know, when you have Keller as your secondary arm, you can make this work tonight on DK. It's not perfect, but it's doable. Uh, Dallas Keuchel, another one of those guys, too, in that lower range. He's 7.8 over on FanDuel, 7.9 on DK. So he's at home um, against Elysia Hernandez and the Marlins. Now, you know, it's the same thing with the Marlins. We just kind of usually overlook them. If they have a good game, they do. It's very rare that we care. Uh, But, I mean, Ronald Acuna has just been out of his mind this month. It's been such a good month for him. He's up to five six right now, so he's at that crazy. he's at that Yelich pricing, you know, <laughs> that Yelich Trout group. Uh, four four on Fanduel, still doable there. Three seven for Josh Donaldson at three. Uh, uh, excuse me, three seven for Josh Donaldson. Four two for Freddie Freeman. You know, I think it's the same thing. It's like you know, they're at home. It's a good spot there for Acuna. It's a good spot there for Freeman. It's a good spot for Donaldson. You take your shot there against Elise here. What do you think? Yeah, and Albies is only 3-6 on Fandle, too. Like, Fandle has slept on Albies and Donaldson the entire season, basically, and they're both having pretty good years. And Donaldson had a slow start, so I get it. Uh, but he's had a pretty good second half. So, I, I mean, yeah, you can't go wrong with the Braves. We know we know all about them. 6.1 team implied total. It's warranted. I get it. And Keiko, we were dead on last time, too. I mean, he had six scoreless against the Mets, 7K. He did actually get lit up earlier in the year, by the Marlins in Miami. He gave up eight runs and 10 hits. It was pretty surprising. That's the type of guy Keiko is, and he pitches to contact. But I don't mind him here at 7-8. You're really just paying for a win. That's it. You just hope he can go six to seven innings, strike out a few, and get the W. I don't hate it. It's not awful, but he's not he's not one of my favorite pitchers on the board. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Keller. I'll, I think Keller's better. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going to do it. Michael Walker at home, 6-1. Against Gio Gonzalez, 7-2. That's the pricing over on FanDuel. Uh, not that you really want either of these guys as uh, as uh, <laughs> standalone arms. But Michael Walker, how about that price for him on DK? 4-7. I had to kind of like do think, a double it? take. Yeah, I mean, geez, 4-7. Do you, do you take the free square and just hope for the best? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I wonder what the best is with him. I mean, he hasn't I struck know. out more than five since... 
There's another career that once upon a time had a lot of promise and then just kind of crapped out. Yeah, he hasn't struck out more than five guys since April. I mean, it's been three, three, five, one, two, zero in an outing in Seattle. Yeah, he started off so strong. I believe his like first two of his first three innings outings, he was flirting with no hitters and perfect games, and throwing a hundred miles like it's like waka waka flamethrower. This guy was as unreal, and now he's he's heading into free agency. I don't even know how many teams will be in on him. I I, I won't go there at, at that price four seven just because of the strikeout upside. If he had a little bit more. I would, and it's the Brewers, so... And, they, and they were though. quiet yesterday. Yeah, people will. And I don't blame them, because it's nice to kind of get a little creative with their lineup and, and do something like that. I mean, you can... If you want to go walk, I mean, you can get any bat you want, right? And you can well, look, let, speaking of bats, let's think if if Waka is, is getting crushed so bad in terms of the algorithms on the DFS sites, then what are we looking for here on the offensive side from Milwaukee? Is it a night to go up to Christian Yelich? Is it a night that you're going to pay up for uh, Keston Hira and Mike Moustakis and those guys? I, I think you can make that case. I think, to me, the most appealing guy is Mike Moustakis, the lefty bat against Waka. And there's a guy, too, hitting you know 30 bombs again this year. Yeah. Uh, a guy that just never gets any credit. And I love Moustakis tonight against Waka, actually. Yeah, for sure. And there's a little <laughs> bit of value on the top of the board, like we were we just mentioned uh, earlier with Tim Lopes at 2-2. I mean, Trent Grisham, if he's going to lead off for the Brewers at 2-8, why not? Um, but yeah, I love Moustakis. I mean, that's been Waka's issue is his home runs and and the walks. And then Keston Harris, 5-3 on, on DraftKings is a little bit a little bit too pricey. They but... always loved him, man. It was like day one. He was like, how much can we? Let's, let's yeah. make him 7K. Meanwhile, Fandle <laughs> doesn't crazy. know who the hell he is. He's 3-8 over there and, and hitting cleanup. So D- DK is like that guy who plays in all dynasty leagues who just overrates every prospect. Yeah. And, <laughs> yes. and Fandle's like that guy who's like 60 years old, still playing fantasy baseball, but doesn't care at all about prospects. He's like, who is this? Uh, Guess so- who? So I don't, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Dead on. How that. much is Buster Posey? <laughs> Six four. Uh, right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, All right. Yeah. Jaime Berea against Brock Burke, which is a great wrestling name. Yeah. Brock Burke. I like that. Uh, anyway, they're in Texas again today. So again, it's another copy and paste from last night. So, um, Mike Trout, four nine. He's in play. You're gonna go with the. Uh, uh, Albert Pools at three, Justin Upton at three, five. It's more user yeah. friendly on FanDuel, but uh, you know, you're just kind of taking a shot at the ballpark. And uh, now in terms of, again, lefties against the angels this year have, have not been a great setup for them, but I think part of that was kind of skewed at, in the beginning of the year too, because they were missing pieces. Yeah, they were missing Upton, um, which is a huge part of their lineup for sure. And Fletcher at the top too. I want to just keep pointing that guy out. Yeah. That guy's just money in the bank. He really is. And at the start of the season, it wasn't him. He wasn't getting the opportunity to play. Um, so, and now he's, he's certainly earned that. Yeah. And Brock Burke, I mean, this is going to be his first big league outing. I can't imagine he's going to go too deep, high walk rates <clears throat> in the minors, some decent striker rates, but some, some brutal command for him too. And, and for Jaime Bar- Barria, you know, a fly ball rate that's sitting at 45% and 44 for his career. So yeah, this is another a game that you're going to want to stack get pieces of both sides uh, keep an eye on the early game see who's in and out of the lineup Willie Calhoun didn't play yesterday I would imagine him he'd play in this game against the righty uh, that's somebody I like all right I'm gonna make a hard pass and I don't call Hamels here it's uh nothing personal I'm just starting to wonder maybe we're just winding down to the end of Cole Hamels which is sad because I had big expectations for him in the beginning of the year and he was actually pretty good <clears throat> but then he hasn't been healthy in these last couple outings going two innings three innings and I don't know. It's just kind of kind of a mess here when you look at the game log. But, uh, you know, still Anthony Rizzo at home right now is hot. 4-2 for him, 4 for Castellano. So, boy, talk about a difference two weeks makes. Because at uh, the trade deadline when he went over here, he's what, like 3-2? Oh, and yeah. now he's 4. So, big difference there in terms of price for him. But he deserved. He's been red hot. Yeah, he's been he's been awesome. Yeah, I think you can attack BD on both sides, righties, lefties. So, yeah, Castellanos has been great. I mean... I think you got to continue to play this guy for sure. And if you yeah, get absolutely. if you get Baez and Rizzo in there, yeah, you're laughing. I don't I don't mind a Cubs stack today. We're not getting a team applied total yet. Unsure why, but it, it's probably at least five. I would say. All right, are you going to try to redeem your Kyle Gibson moment last <laughs> night with Michael Pineda <laughs> with and my boy Pineda against Reynaldo Lopez and the White Sox? 
Are you going to double down? <laughs> I mean, probably not. Eight, nine is a little <laughs> steep. But you, I know what I'm going to get with Pineda. I look at the game log. It's actually unbelievable. He does this every single time. And I can't just do it on the fly. But, you know, in his starts. Okay, so he's had 22. 17 of them have probably been just three runs. 5K, one walk, a quality start. And, and that's what he does. I mean, he's not walking anybody. 1.77 per. The Ks have gone up slightly. He's at 109 now in 122 innings. He's probably going to get the run support against Ronaldo Lopez. But 8-9 is a little bit too too pricey for me. Like, he just faced the White Sox three Yeah, 9-4 is too much for me. That's like And he didn't return value. Yeah. yeah. He won the game. He went seven <laughs> innings, two runs, 5K, got the W. But at 8-9, we're just pushing a little bit. And then another outing gets the White Sox earlier. 8K, six innings, one run. Like, that's that's the kind of upside he has. But 8-9 is, is pushing it just slightly. It's a little expensive. Mitch Garver, 3-4. Eddie Rosario, 3-7. Very good values today. Uh, over on the FanDuel side. So just keep that in mind. Houston Astros, Aaron Sanchez against Spencer Turnbull. So here's another opportunity for another pitcher with uh, some limitations, but he pitches for Houston and they're playing Detroit. Uh, I know Aaron Sanchez is the first when he went straight over there. It was like, oh my God, who is this guy? Who is this Aaron Sanchez? You know, and then we've had a little bit of a, I don't want to say a reckoning, but it's like come back down a little bit. It's still been decent, yeah. you know? So in the last three outings, he's 2-0, and 15 strikeouts, 7 walks, 10 hits in those 16 innings. So it's been good enough. At 8-5, I feel like that's the price. I don't love it as a standalone arm. It's okay. It's fine. But here we go again. DK secondary arm, 6.8. Hell yeah. Like, you yeah. can do that and Bieber and make that work tonight without a doubt. Absolutely. So, yeah, we were talking about, like, just punting with Waka. This is the punt. I mean, it's it's 2,000 more, but it's still pretty decent at 6-8. I would expect Houston to I, – I don't think they're going to go quietly today. You know, they, they should be able to score some runs. So, look at the look at the team apply total. Look at the difference. 6-1, 3-5. Astros are almost minus 300 favorites. I think you take that. You take Sanchez. You plug him in there, and you just – you hope for maybe a quality start and a W. I mean, like you said, he has won two of his last three games. And hopefully, Jose Altuve will be back in this lineup. Ugh, so it's mad. Be, it's he would have gone yard yesterday if he was in that lineup. I'm telling you. Oh, for sure. Stupid, stupid. He's going right. to go yard today. You going to pick him? <laughs> well, well yeah, stay tuned. Hang Maybe around. <laughs> Hang around. We'll see what happens here. Uh, Kyle Freeland is uh, taking on Alex Young over in Arizona tonight. And that means that uh, it's time to bust out some Arizona Diamondbacks. Boomer okay. Flores, historically always good against lefties in his career. 3.1 over on FanDuel. Eduardo Escobar is a decent value at 4-1. And I know Peralta is a lefty bat. I don't care. It's Kyle Freeland. I can't believe Kyle Freeland is still getting thrown out there every fifth day. Peralta at three, four. I'll take the lefty lefty matchup and I'll, and I'll, and I'll worry about it later. So <laughs> I'll just yeah. like take some discounts here and make it work. Freeland has pitched 15 innings against Arizona this year. 15 innings. Get this. He's allowed 24 hits, <laughs> 18 runs <laughs> and seven homers. And none all? of, and, and only one of those outings I believe came in colorado so we can't even like just blame and it look, on Colorado. christian walker at three five two everybody's favorite uh april darling remember when people were like oh my yes. god christian walker's the next cody bellinger no he's not yeah stop yes. stop no, <laughs> who the hell said that oh um, my god no but the christian yeah. walker god no, the, I know. The, I, I the know. padding on the back for christian walker early in the year like i get it he's had a good month let's when he yeah. has a good season, we will we'll talk about it. And it's yeah, been okay, I mean, but I mean it's been okay, but yeah, he's cooled off. So twenty one homers for right handed bats against Freeland <laughs> at three ninety three Woba, uh just through the roof, the hard hit rate at forty four percent. So yeah, give me some Arizona. <laughs> right. It was very Bill Lumberg of you. All <laughs> right, in the late slate today, in the, in the late slate, you have Domingo Ramon at nine nine, which is a funny price. You don't usually see the nine nine. No, just, like why not just right? go to ten? I was like, go to yeah. 10. What's one like? Nope, nope, nine, nine. <laughs> I'm shocked anyway. that Herman is 10, eight on DraftKings against. So is, yeah, so is yeah. he. But, you know, it's almost, <laughs> it's against Homer Bailey. I think that's why, you know, they're just looking at. And look, here we go. We're getting tempted again. Aaron Judge. And I watched a couple of Aaron Judge at bats over the weekend, too. And they weren't great. Some of them are <laughs> just like. Now he's down what to three he's nine. Pre- he's really pressing. He's really he's down to three nine. Oh my gosh, Homer Bailey that is that the guy tonight? I'm I'm in. I'm in. I'm yeah. Aaron Judge at three nine. It's such a value. You got to do it. And yeah. Didi's at three five. That's another fantastic value against Homer Bailey tonight. A hundred percent ownership for Didi Gregorius tonight. 
Yeah, that, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and lefties 44% hard hit rate, righties 46% hard hit rate against Homer Bailey. Fly ball rate is pretty high as well. So take shots on all those guys. And still going to take a shot, I think, on Chris Davis at 2-9 on DraftKings. I mean, especially if you're playing on the late slate. I know he hasn't looked good either, and we keep talking about him, but he's 2-4 on FanDuel. I mean, Herman has given up some home runs over the past few starts. I mean, he's like, don't be fooled by his price, that he's like an elite pitcher. And Canna's 2-8. And Olsen's three six. I wouldn't be shocked if there's some run scored in this game. Like I'm, I'm leaning over right now with these two pitchers on the hill um, in the late slate. It's at nine and a half. Yeah, I don't mind. I feel good about Herman at the nine nine. Do you ten eight at ten eight? I don't at nine nine. Especially if you're isolated and you're playing the late slates, it's that's fine. I think that'll. I think that dog will hunt. I do, okay. but. Okay. You know, it's uh, at the ten eight on DK. I think it's a little harder because it's always harder to make make the puzzle work. But yeah, it's it's time. It's look, we just got to keep buying on Aaron Judge because it's coming. It's yeah. just it's happening. And the last game of the night, Sean Reed Foley against Clayton Kershaw, who's over twelve on each site. I'm gonna pass. Hard pass for me. It's just too much, too much offense out there tonight that I like that I just can't can't hang with the Kershaw at twelve. How about you, Chris? Right. Yeah, it's impossible to get it done on DraftKings. It, oh, forget it. it. Yeah, there's there's even if you isolate that slate on DK. Chance. You would have to have a lineup of gosh, I'm trying to look. You'd have to have like the bottom of the A's lineup, like Chris is like Chris Davis. Corbin just say Joseph. you, like that's yeah, a, you know. yeah. Just say you went Kershaw and Sanchez, and then you're three nine the rest of your lineup. Um, so it's pretty slim. I mean, you get those two leadoff guys that we talked about. You can afford Aaron Judge at four though. Free. <laughs> yeah, I mean you can. So, so you would just have to take value across the board and, and hope it's it's not a cash game strategy, guys. If you want Kershaw. Uh, make it a tournament strategy. Make it a, make a tournament lineup. All right. So what are you looking at betting lines tonight, Chris? All right. Let's go with Washington. They're red hot. I, I love the Nationals uh, these days. So Washington, I like Cincinnati at home with Sonny Gray on the hill. Uh, I like Cleveland on the road heading into New York. I like the over between the Phillies and the, and the Red Sox. Even with Aaron Nola, I think there's going to be some run scored there. I like the Braves at home by more than one run. They're minus two, 295 favorites. Um, you know, you're not going to get any. Any value there? You got to pick them by a couple runs. I, I will probably get the over in St. Louis and Milwaukee. I would assume with Michael Walker and Gio Gonzalez on the hill, I, I can get behind that nine and a half for sure. Uh, Cubs at home minus two hundred favorites. Twins at home right now minus two hundred could creep up to minus two fifty. Honestly, before first pitch happens, the Nats or the the Tex. Oh, jeez, let's get it. <laughs> Houston. We haven't had coffee yet. It's another Houston early day, by everybody. two. It is another early day. Houston by two, Arizona. And then we'll wrap it up. I do. Honestly, I feel strong about the Yankees and the A's, the over. I'll eat it tomorrow if not, but I think there'll be some runs there. All right. So it's time to call our shot. Chris Meany, where are you going today to go yard? Let's head over to that Boston Philadelphia game and let's go with Reese Hoskins. I'll go with Reese Hoskins against the lefty and, and Brian Johnson. Let's hope for a home run from Reese today. Reese's piece has been a little quiet this year. All right. Well, I'm going to pick on Kyle Freeland because it's fun. Yeah, good call. Once again, I want you to throw out those numbers against Arizona this year. Go ahead. Give it to me. Okay, here we go. So 15 innings against the Diamondbacks this year. He's allowed 24 hits. 24 hits. 18 runs. 18 runs. And seven homers. Seven homers. Make it eight at least. (laughs) And And make it Wilmer Flores. Oh, I love the Wilmer Flores tonight. He's uh, very good against left-handed pitching. He's been better at home than on the road this year. All things equal. Give me Wilmer Flores. And he's he's cheap. He's cheap. 3-1. Everybody loves a cheap home run. It's great. It's 4-6 on DK, 3-1 on FanDuel. So super cheap there. Lock it up against Kyle Freeland. So that'll do it for us today. Uh, Make sure you uh, keep in mind uh, we'll be back again tomorrow. As always, on Wednesday, we're doing baseball. Thursday will be the football show, so we'll have your uh, AFC and NFC North. That'll be dropping on Thursday. If you haven't already, go subscribe to the pre-snap and go download the Line Star app. Again, that's the pre-snap show and the Line Star app for MLB and NFL and all things in between. You can follow us on the Twitter machine at Joe JoePizzapia17 and at Chris Meany. And, of course, follow Line Star app at Line Star MLB and Line Star NFL. And that'll do it for us. There's nothing left to do except step out of the on-deck circle and into the batter's box and go yard. We'll see you next time, kids. You've been listening to the DFS On Deck Podcast, brought to you by LineStar. Hit subscribe, tell a friend, and stay tuned for the next episode from fantasy baseball experts Joe Pizzapia and Chris Minnie.